In the early 1900s, a strange man started appearing around Russia's royal family. Cloaked in a dark robe and a mysterious atmosphere following everywhere he went, a strange man who would later be regarded to be the most enigmatic human history had ever witnessed. This is the story of how Grigory Rasputin came to power, cheated death, and fooled the world. Russia in the late 1800s wasn't a great place to raise a family. Even though it was the largest country on the planet, its sheer size made it insanely hard to govern, and at the time, its culture was pretty backwards, with most of its population consisting of peasant farmers. During these times, one of the only things people could hold on to was religion, and into one of these families, Rasputin was born. He was his parents' ninth and last attempt at having a child, as all of his siblings had died in their early years. Records suggest that Rasputin was a troubled and educated teen, and would regularly get into fights with the authorities of a drinking and a minor theft, and his life was relatively uneventful, and except for that, most information about his early years is now lost to time, now being considered a black hole of information by historians. They say the life of a man does not begin until adulthood, and the same thing was true for Grigori. In 1897, Rasputin decided to leave his hometown. The reasons for this are once again unclear, but certain sources suggest that it may have been due to an emotional crisis related to a religious vision he had experienced. Whatever it may have been to instill this metamorphosis in the now father of a newborn son led him to leave his family and old life behind to pursue his newfound religious feelings by going on a pilgrimage to the St. Nicholas Monastery. He spent several months at the chapel, learning the way of the priests, but his efforts would remain fruitless, as he was unable to become a priest like he'd originally intended. But his time would not have gone unused, as he finally learned how to read and write, among other skills that would come in handy later on. Grigori would return to his village as a changed man. He wasn't the peasant his fellow villagers had gotten acquainted to, no. He was very different to the man they once knew. Where once stood Grigori, a charismatic yet dubious character had taken his place, and his newfound spiritualism would help him build a loyal community of followers that grew larger as the word of his practices spread. But not all of it was positive. Villagers started harboring suspicions, and rumors of intimate orgies involving Rasputin and his female followers started to haunt his reputation. However, the mysterious air surrounding the man would actually benefit his efforts. A cornerstone of his influence was his claim that he was able to heal the ill and possessed prophetic powers. At this time, the royal family had a problem that threatened to end their entire legacy. What we today know as hemophilia, a highly dangerous and rare illness that causes blood to clot improperly, leading to uncontrollable bleeding, befell members of the aristocratic families of Europe so frequently that it used to be known as the royal disease, including the only son of Tsar Nicholas, Alexei. This was an immense threat to the dynasty as their bloodline threatened to run out of heirs. This desperation to save their sick son led Alexei's parents to try out every possible cure to their son's disease, and, after exhausting most of their options, only experimental practitioners were left on the table. One of them happened to be a strange man that the peasants would call Rasputin, that claimed to have what he needed to aid Alexei's woes, because time was running out. In the summer of that year, the young Tsarevich had gotten into an accident that would put him in a deep fever and intense pain, and for the first time, it didn't seemed like the Tsar's doctors could prolong what little time Alexei had left. And with no other choice, the Tsar and the Tsarina decided to finally send the mysterious man a telegram. And the answer to their pleas would come a lot sooner than expected. God has seen your tears and heard your prayers. Do not grieve, the little one will not die. Do not allow the doctors to bother him too much. And somehow, despite the incurable nature of his illness, Alexei's pain came to a sudden end the following day. Dr. Fedorov, one of the physicians who attended Alexei, admitted that the recovery was wholly inexplicable from a medical point of view. And with this miracle, Rasputin had breached the royal court. There was no way back. But his newfound royal acclaim would be much more controversial than initially thought. The Russian people suspect that he held a tight leash over the royal family, and soon, accusations of sexual assault would be spread by his adversaries, including a supposed affair with the Tsarina. But whether or not these allegations held weight, is unfortunately lost to time. Needless to say, the public started slowly turning against Rasputin, and with that, the royal family. This didn't help the tensions that were unfolding in Russia. The economy kept getting worse, and the threat of a global war was looming on the horizon. Even though the family didn't want to admit it, Rasputin had to go. But the Tsar family couldn't risk the life of the proclaimed holy man. I mean, what would happen to their son, Alexei? And there was another thing. 
In 1912, Grigory Rasputin published the book Pious Reflections, as he seemed to notice the shifting tides. In it, he demonstrated his supposedly godly gift of clairvoyance, with a few interesting predictions that would deeply unsettle the Tsar. If my murder is committed by nobles, then the future of Russia and the imperial family will be terrible. The nobles will flee the country, and the relatives of the Tsar will not be alive in two years. And this prediction would unfortunately come true very soon. What seemed to be a faraway menace was approaching closer and closer, and all of a sudden, Russia had gotten involved in a monumental battle that we now know as World War I. This divided the country even further, and they now couldn't afford having somebody as controversial as Rasputin associated with the royals of the public eye. And while the royal family were scared of doing anything about his figure, a group of nobles took it upon themselves to end the reign of Rasputin forever. Enter Felix Yusupov. The heir of Russia's richest family was dissatisfied with what Grigory had done to the royal family, and as tensions grew, so did his desire to do something about the infidel. And after consulting with a few other aristocrats, they hatched a simple but effective plan. They wanted to lure Rasputin into his palace under the pretense of having a private meeting with him. Then they would lace Rasputin's favorite baked goods with enough cyanide to kill multiple dozen men. But something happened that the conspirators could never imagine. Everything was going according to plan, but even after eating several pounds of poisoned cake and drinking almost the same in wine, Rasputin was unfazed and even asked for a third serving. This shocked Prince Felix, because by any means of logic, Rasputin should have been dead, and from what he knew, the man who claimed to be a saint had just survived poison that should have been lethal to anybody who came into contact with it. Was there more to Grigori than he had thought? He started to panic and decide that the only option he had left was a more direct method. <laughs> Felix pulled out his revolver and started to fire at Rasputin, who dropped to the floor after being pierced by several bullets at a very close range. And while the murderers were relieved and decided to converse on how to proceed with the dead body, the second bizarre incident that would happen that night started to take action. Against all odds, Rasputin's presumed dead body slowly started to regain liveliness, and suddenly, he started to run. Grigori somehow still hadn't died to the shock of his killers. A chase would ensue, and despite his best efforts, Rasputin's luck seemed to have run out, because his pursuers would quickly catch up to the fleeing man and pump several more rounds into the mystic. When this didn't feel like enough, they proceeded to beat him, but still, Rasputin just wouldn't die. One last resort remained to the attackers, and after discussion, they decided to tie Rasputin up with ropes and threw him into one of Moscow's many frozen rivers. His body was found several days later. An autopsy concluded that Rasputin was shot three times. One shot was on the left side of his chest, one in his back, and the fatal shot was in his forehead. But most shockingly, it was found that there were no traces of poison in Rasputin's body. So, what happened? Now, there are many theories regarding how Rasputin may have survived the poison, but the one that is generally most accepted by historians seems to be that Rasputin's diet, which mostly consisted of garlic, may have saved him. In a study in which the impact of garlic consumption on the effect of cyanide poison was recently tested on mice, it was found out that the plant can actually cancel out a lot of its effects, meaning that Rasputin's survival wasn't anything supernatural, but a simple coincidence. What's left on the table, though, are his healing abilities, specifically how he saved Alexei's life on numerous occasions. Well, the illness that Tsarevich was suffering from, hemophilia, is still an almost untreatable condition over a hundred years since. But that doesn't mean that there aren't any factors that can make its symptoms worse. Aspirin, a common painkiller at the time, which was often prescribed by doctors, has only been recently found out to significantly worsen hemophilia's manifestations, as it accelerates the already present blood thinning. So it isn't outlandish to think that the medication would have been given to Alexei back in the day. Now, one more thing. Whenever Rasputin was called to help the Tsar's son, he urged the royal family to keep doctors away from him, meaning that most likely, Rasputin's magical healing powers were a simple coincidence. But his death did have serious repercussions, and almost exactly like in his prediction, Russia's control by the royals would come to an end not even two years after his murder, when peasants and revolutionaries would storm the palace, and subsequently kill every single member of the monarch's family. This caused the collapse of the Russian Empire, and marked the end of the royal rule of the country.